the decision not to include an Australian naval vessel as part of a, a US-led coalition effort in the Red Sea. What's the thinking behind that? Well, we're still considering that um, and the decision will be made in, in due course. Uh, Australia's maritime uh, support is very much focused on our region at the moment, uh, the Indo-Pacific region. And we work very closely with the United States and other allies, predominantly on freedom of navigation exercises through the South China Sea. And you would have seen HMAS Toowoomba was up in the region um, a few weeks ago. Uh, there'll be further vessels that will travel to the region to support that freedom of commerce um, that is so important to the upholding of the rule of law uh, within our region. So that's the priority for Australia at the moment. Having said that, we do have ADF support and personnel that are involved in the Middle East in Operation Manitow. There's about five personnel that are involved in that operation. Um, with this fresh request, there'll be a consideration given of that and a decision will be made in due course. So it's still possible we might send a, a vessel to be a part of that? The, the, the decision is still being made here and uh, we're considering it and, and we'll make a decision in due course. Uh, obviously, the government has to liaise with the Australian Defence Force, particularly the Navy in this case, and, and we'll make a decision um, in, in the due course. Let me ask you about the reaction locally to the ongoing conflict in the Middle East. There are concerns that we could see the, the conflict uh, in it, not just we've seen skirmishes, but a, an all-out war now between Israel potentially and Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. It's having a big impact on communities in Australia, including Australia's Jewish community. What's your message to those communities so invested in this conflict on the other side of the world. Obviously, it's not something we see often where an issue of international importance, a war of this magnitude, is felt so keenly locally in a, in a domestic sense. Yeah, you're right, Kieran. Unfortunately, there, there has been uh, some division in Australia uh, regarding the war in, in the Middle East. Uh, my message to constituents in, in the community that I represent is that every Australian, has the right to live in peace and to practice their religion um, and to go about their daily lives without the threat of, uh, of conflict, without the threat um, of uh, Islamophobia um, or anti-Semitism. And there's no place at all for that in Australia. And over the, the past couple of weeks, uh, I've been trying to work very closely with the local Jewish community. Unfortunately, there have been some anti-Semitic uh, attacks on people's property um, and and on them, them personally in the area that I represent. So I've been attending shuls, uh, attended a number of Hanukkah celebrations with the local community, going to Hakkawa Football Club uh, matches, doing my bit to try and show my support for the local Jewish community. I met with some Jewish representatives yeah. yesterday. But equally, you know, we've had some representations um, from people of Islamic faith uh, about uh, their concerns around Islamophobia. And I've assured them that the government is uh, supportive through um, upholding laws that ensure that Australians have the right to practice their religion and to live freely and peacefully. Does the Jewish community feel like you let, let them down in the particular that support for a, the resolution at the UN on a ceasefire? Uh, that Israel should support a ceasefire. Is that something that disappointed your constituents of the Jewish faith? Well, I was at Hanukkah celebrations last week and no-one expressed that view uh, to me. I, I, as I've said to the Jewish community, um, we've been very consistent in the approach that we've taken as a government. Going back to the resolution that was moved in the parliament by the Prime Minister and seconded by the opposition leader that wholeheartedly condemned the actions of Haas um, called for the immediate release of hostages. We continue to do that uh, every day and uh, recognised Israel's right to defend itself. Um, but that motion yeah. also importantly pointed to the fact that you have to uphold international law and that's the basis upon which Australia acted in the United Nations to ensure that up, up we uphold international law, particularly humanitarian law, around the, the protection of civilians in a conflict like that. 
Greg Sheridan will be joining me shortly to discuss uh, the latest in, in Gaza and the Middle East. Uh, we'll, so we'll have more on that in just a moment. Um, finally, I know you held a news conference earlier in the day and just I, I need to finish on this note because it's an important message. You touched on the, the contribution of our veterans earlier in our discussion, but you're urging people, friends, family, loved ones, fellow servicemen and women to check in on their mates over this festive season. Yeah, thanks for raising it, Kieran. It's a really important issue. Uh, we know that uh, Open Arms, the Veterans Counselling Service, are coming up to their busiest period. Uh, this is the period where, uh, where they get a lot of calls from veterans who are doing it tough. And we know that the holiday period is a time where Australians come together with family and friends. But for a lot of Australians, particularly a lot of veterans, they're on their own, uh, they feel isolated, alone, and it can trigger trauma that they may have experienced through their service. So we're asking Australians to think about any friends or mates that they have that are veterans and reach out to them over this holiday period and just check in on them, thank them for their service to our nation and make them feel a part of, of our society. And likewise, if you know a person or a family that's got an ADF member that's on deployment overseas at the moment and away from their family over Christmas, give them a call, their family, and check in on them and thank them for their service. I think that uh, we, we need to make sure that we stand by our service personnel and veterans over this holiday period when it can be tough for them. Absolutely. Well said. And uh, we'll talk to you next year. Thanks for everything. Uh, and joining us throughout 2023, Assistant Defence Minister Matt Thistlethwaite. Appreciate it. Thanks, Kieran. Have a great Christmas to you and your listeners.